Hello again, Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games, back for more War Machine, and this time Signar's Silver Line Storm Guard. Golden Skin, 09092. So, the Silver Line Storm Guard is actually an upgrade kit for the conventional Storm Guard infantry, consisting of some backpacks and a variant weapon for the uh, leader model. They do not have the conventional Storm Guard's ability of uh, Electro Leap, but as long as they are base to base with them all in the same unit, they cannot be targeted by a charge, making them more defensive. In addition, uh, the leader has a similar ability to the Storm Guard uh, normal leader. And next is going to be Banshee Brown, whereby he can make a ranged attack. But as opposed to being offensive, it applies a debuff to the target from remembering right that makes them more vulnerable to electrical damage rolls. Again, I think I'm remembering right. The CID things are constantly changing with the community and grade development. But thematically, they emerged after during the Caspius Sul War when the Protector of Menoth invaded the Signaran capital from their half of it. I'll give the rest of the history lesson as the uh, video goes on. But one battalion of Storm Guard took heavy casualties, and the survivors endured so much firepower from Protectorate flamethrowers that their armor, their armor's paint, was burned down to the bare metal. And the king at the time, Leto Railthorn was wanting to form a new division of Stormguard anyway, and used them as the core of it, with Sebastian Nemo, I believe was uh, Artificer General, or no, Lord General, I'm trying to think, I cannot remember his official title at the time actually, but N Nemo uh, issued the division new prototype equipment he had been working on. So this is going to be a simple, uh, color scheme for this, and yeah, I'm going to leave it like that, apply that to the rest, move on when it dries. Alright, next, I'm going to use True Silver 09207 and go for a much brighter metal on the armor than I normally would in the, which is basically going to be bereft of any other detailing. Excuse me again, I'm using just enough water to thin the paint. Now this now right, let me think. So the Caspius Sioux War where the Silver Line Storm Guard were founded. The Protector of Menoth was once part of Signar, but broke off for religious reasons when worship of Morrow became the official state religion. The Menites of Signar started a civil war, resulting in the Protectorate to gain. I am really having trouble talking today, resulting in the foundation of the Protectorate of Menoth and Signar's capital, Caspia, being split in half along the river it uh, straddled, with the Signar in half remaining Caspia and the Menites re renaming their half of it to Sul after one of the ancient hierarchs. And once the uh, war proper started, uh, Coleman Stryker, at that point, Lord General ordered an attack on, or no, Lord Commander. Stryker ordered an attack on Sewell. Its walls were breached, but unfortunately, the attack did not go as well as he had hoped, and the Protectorate forces eventually went into the Signaran half of the city. It was there that during this fighting that the Silver Line 
formed. Striker himself would end this attack by resulting in a ceasefire by killing Hierarch Boyle and turning over Mennonite prisoners he had taken. During a particularly brutal period of his life, he would eventually redeem himself. He would redeem himself up. But before, uh, I am really having trouble talking. Stryker kind of went evil for a while after dealing with protectorate brutality. Ending the war in Caspia Sewell is where he kind of redeemed himself, realizing that he would never beat the protectorate by matching their own brutality there. I think I finally said it in a manner that is not completely bonkers. Oh boy. All right. This should work reasonably well. This is just a fair bit lighter than I normally go with, start with metallic, but it'll work out. Okay. Alright. Okay, apply that to the rest, and move on when it tries. Next, Ultramarine Blue. Just going to get the cloth here. More or less just a faction specific ornamentation. I need the leg here a bit, so just. Loot and a blood out and apply to the rest. All right, next old bronze is zero nine one nine seven. Normally, this is something I'd use as a secondary color on the armor as well, but here I'm just going to use it on some weaponry. Pretty much just get the halves of the halberds. Out the blades in a minute. I think I'll switch to a finer brush now. Gotta pick out if I can get some paint on here. Pick out this uh, cable and this. A central node to the backpack. Yeah, I don't want to go too far with this. That's probably enough. Okay, apply to the rest and move on. All right, next, antique gold zero nine zero five zero. Gonna get some symbols here, the officer's markings. And 
ali segurança do mar. Play the rest, and I'll just be one more base coat once the bronze is dry. Okay, last base coat, plate mail metal. Was this mechanism in the center of the Latvia blade, which is similar in shape to a device on the various Stormsmith uh, models? And then the blade itself. That I think. Crap. Well, I've got no grip today. All right, I'm going to do one of the uh, troopers here, one of the guns. And just get the blade on the helper. I think I need to readjust my lighting. I'm still playing around with it. All right. Apply to the rest, and when it's all dry, I can start shading. Okay, time to shade. Ancient bronze zero nine zero four nine. Thinning the paint with one part water to one part paint. Particularly dark colors, though, you would need two to three parts water to one part paint. Let's so go over the insignias here. I'll apply to the rest and move on. And next, black and steel 09205. Yeah, yeah. Got a little mixed up while I was doing there for a minute. as well and apply to the rest and next ultramarine shadow 09187 so I was able to do three of these in rapid succession which is about half on most of these models yeah give or take so not too bad. You want to avoid having adjacent colors uh, 
shaded simultaneously just because of a tendency for this to blend. You can, you know, roll with that and make it work for you, but it can also work against you, so just be mindful that that'll happen. And apply that to the rest and let it dry for a bit. Okay, aged pewter 09196. Trying to keep just enough paint in the brush to do the job without oversaturating it. Just going over the bronze. Let's thin that out just a little more. That's a little better. Don't want to completely, I don't want to completely cover up the uh, base coating. Just doing enough to shade it. I'm... I didn't sleep well last night, so I'm more than a little loopy. So I just gotta, just gonna have to roll with it here. I just want to get this done. All right, that's just gonna leave the armor, the khaki, the skin tone on the off on the uh, leader, and then start some lighting. All right, next, plate mail metal. So effectively, I'm trying to have the armor one step brighter than the blades, which is what I would, uh... Okay. I'm getting a little... Very, very tired. <laughs> Sleeping troubles. But I want to get this done, so. Just uh, start up top. Go over the backpack. Avoiding the bronze. Now, there will be lighting effects on the weapons and backpack, but that's going to wait until after. I think I can start on the lighting effects when I do the khaki, but uh, for now it's just going to have to wait. Being careful around the faction signal. Trying to do this one stage at a time. Light of the rest, let it dry, and then move on. Just one shade left, and then, some, well, no, two shades left. I almost forgot about the officer's skin, but a little lighting, and just about done. Okay. Well, before I pre I think I'm going to prep some lighting effects before I get the last little bit of shading. So, using the. So, Matt White, because the officer is the example here, at least to a certain extent. I'm going to 
still in the uh, nodes on the the nodes on the weapon here. And along the back. And this coil inside. This is just prep work to get the lighting effect proper. A sort of barrel in the back. These slots on the back, that little gauge. These coils here. Keep putting my head in the light somehow. Slots on the back here. Okay, I think that's good. Now on one of the grunts, do section here, coils, and then just a bit on the back here, prep the same areas on the backpack. that to the rest and come back in a minute. Okay, Golden Shadow 09091, the lighting, the prep work for the lighting is still drying, so, but I can do this in the meantime. Don't need too terribly much of this either. Spin that out. face quick once over there we go and the last bit of shading is going to be khaki shadow 09121 not much of this which is good because I don't seem to have much of this left okay okay One reason I keep a paper towel handy to soak up air and paint. Just a bit under the arms here. And mostly on the legs where that quilted insulation is to protect them from any electrical discharge from their own weapon. And apply that to the rest, and when this dries, I can have the lighting. Okay. My system deleted that entire last clip. So, I picked out the officer's eyes in matte white. Sure. And I am going over the white I prepped earlier with sky blue 09018. 
using two to three parts water to one part paint to thin into a wash. This has been a odd day for me regarding these videos. One unusual thing after another. Alright. The key is to let some of the light show through. So, a particularly thin wash on your lighting color. And then the storm chamber here, I forgot to highlight until after the fact. So, that was a dumb liner. Okay, let that dry, move on. Gonna be highlighting soon. Okay, working so far. Matte black. Gonna add a little detail in the eyes first and then start highlighting. Just need a tiny dot of this for now. Moist, but not overly damp, but even just enough water in the paint. There we go, just pupils in the eyes. Now taking a ragged feathered brush, something like that. Golden highlight 09093. No water, straight paint only. Rubbing it out on the paper towel it looks like there's next to nothing left. And lightly dusting the area to be affected, going across any raised areas. Okay. Now, khaki highlight 09123. I'm going to focus on the most readily visible areas, so probably just going to do the portions of the legs that are obvious. Eh, bit on the arm, I suppose. Let it catch on the quilting there. Apply to the rest and move on. Okay, next, Ultramarine Highlight 09199, or 09189, excuse me. Oh boy. Seems this one's shot. Fortunately, this one I do have spare on. Need a little extra mixing because it's a new pot. So, I'm trying to get quick on some off camera. Still have a piece of wire down the hole. Alright. Oh. This video has certainly had some awkward moments. Alright, there we go. There's some to work with. the most visible portion of the cloth. Just a little bit with a silver gun in it, so we'll just use a little extra paint to touch that up. And apply that to the rest now. Okay, next, 
pearl white 09100. This is a metallic white. And if assuming this works like I think it will, well, let's find out. I'm thinking this will give the appropriate highlight to the lighter metal armor. So, this will be appropriate brush. This should do. Let's uh, find out what we get. Well, you know, I think it's working okay. Hmm, could be better, could be worse. Overall, I think it's working okay. too bad. So, apply that to the rest and move on. And next, Tarnished Brass 09198. before I forget it's there. And having some of the light effects, lighting effects spill over like this helps to sell the load illusion that it's glowing. So, apply that to the rest now. Oh boy, focus issues are bound, good gravy. Right, new gold, 09051. Almost done. And last actual highlight, True Silver 09207. I'm going to do two models with this on camera. One of the grunts and then the leader. regular unit leader. The officer has a very specific term in this game.
Okay. Let that dry and uh, start the arc. Okay. Time to start the front arcs. Ultramarine blue. A flathead brush. And I'm going to overextend the arcs at first and then scale them back. War Machine does rely on a distinct front and back arc to determine where you can attack through and if anybody's got some kind of advantage against you. So, and that arc is the front 180 degrees. Gonna overextend it first, being careful where the model's feet touch the base. And then, once this dries, I will clean it up and get it scaled back to where it should be. Okay. Apply the rest, let it dry completely, and then I can uh, do what I need to do. Okay, this is where it's getting a little bit awkward. I'm going to I'm going to touch up the arcs now. Oh boy, these things are flying everywhere. You know, this is a self-healing cutting mat Privateer Press puts out that has those arcs conveniently marked, so I'm just gonna center them on here. Get some matte black out. It's a two-step process. Step one here. It's the same amount of water as I would for a base coat, just enough to get the brush wet. Carefully mark. And then just Bring that all the way to the top, real careful like. And do that to the rest, and then I can tighten up the back side. Uh, yeah, this is just going to be awkward. Okay. Switching to a flathead brush now. And taking that same matte black now that all the models are marked. Just gonna backfill carefully. Being especially careful where the feet or other um, parts of the model come close to the base. And uh Apply to the rest, and once that completely dries, I need to mark the leader and start flocking. Okay, so now I'm going to take the leader model and a bit of uh, matte white, just a dot of it. That should be plenty. And I'm just going to mark an L on the back make doubly sure because I've gained with some uh, people that take things so seriously I give them as few excuses as possible and by the time I get to him he'll have dried so next I'm gonna mix up a solution of white glue and water very generous on both compounds. And mix that all up nice and thorough. I'm going to have to readjust my lighting. It's not it's still not working quite right. Figure something out though. Now I'm just gonna 
take a model and actually get ahead of myself first. I'm going to take my basic material, which in this case is flock with a little bit of static grass mixed in. Make sure I don't accidentally crush a model while I'm doing this. Just paint this around the feet. Give it a dip in the flock. Knock off the excess. Then taking a spare brush that's dry, I'm just going to push it away from any areas I don't want it. And it looks like I lucked out on this one. So I'm going to let that set for 20 to 30 minutes. Then I can seal it. So apply the rest, move on. And just about done. Alright, final step, at least the one that I can do on camera, scenic cement, is a spare brush on adhesive, and taking a glass eyedropper, glass because this stuff will bond with plastic like you split, and carefully drip that into base, you need to give your flock or whatever other material you use a chance to set first, I'll give this about 20 minutes this time. Otherwise, it'll just make divots. But that is uh, that. Silver Line Storm Guard from the Sigma Faction of War Machine. Got one more Sigma unit coming up, and hopefully, I have fewer problems with it next time. Until then, I am Ian Stuckey with Mastermind Games, signing out.